Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime show might have reminded us of Super Mario Smash Brothers, but it was still a massive flex nonetheless. Want to know who else loves to flex? Superheroes, that's who. Did you forget who I am? I am Optimus Prime. And from the looks of it, you definitely love watching them doing it on my channel. You want forgiveness? Get religious. So I'm back with Volume 4. Hey, this has got as many sequels as Thor now, right? You better like, share and subscribe because I'm finally worthy. Stark, we need a plan of attack. I have a plan. Attack. Speaking of Thor actually, here he is in the very first entry, although he's not the one doing the flexing here. If we were to go back to 2015, life definitely looked good didn't it? The first Avengers movie was released all over the world and raked in over one and a half billion dollars at the global box office. Listen well brother. <laughs> I'm listening. It was the culmination of Marvel's first attempt at building a cohesive franchise and needless to say, it did work wonders. Spearheading their effort was Robert Downey Jr. who at this point had already established himself as the MCU's best character, Iron Man. Not only did he steal the show with his charisma and wit, he also gave us the kind of sass that would even put Beyonce to shame. Take Thor's first entrance as an example. Normally you'd be cautious while taking on the Norse God of Thunder, just like Captain America. But Tony Stark? <laughs> Not a chance. Not only does he ridicule Thor's dress sense, he straight up goes on the offensive despite Steve's warning. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Uh, Shakespeare in the park? Doth mother know you wear as her drapes? I mean, I guess he was right about God's fashion sense, but come on. To attack without a plan it means you're definitely on some boss level vibes. Oh, honey, you have no idea what is possible. That's why I'm apologizing, so sorry. Gamora is not the one for you, Quill. I am a dancer, Gamora is not. You just need to find a woman who is pathetic, like you. With Volume 3 coming up soon, the Guardians of the Galaxy are finally coming to the close of their MCU chapters. I just want to take this moment to soak in the glory of having more volumes than a successful Marvel franchise. Yes! I have single-handedly vanquished the beast! <laughs> Come on now, this is a flexes video. Did you really think I wasn't going to stroke my own ego as well, eh? I'm sure you must have gotten the reference, but there's a certain destroyer who would have taken my line a bit too literally. He's coming back for her. And when he does, that's when you... Why would I put my finger on his throat? Drax started off as a menacing fighter who wasn't one to mess around with, but at the end of it, he turned out to be one of the funniest members of the team. I mean, seriously, apart from I am Groot, the most popular line from the Guardians is definitely, Why is Gamora? Where is Gamora? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Of course, just because he doesn't get metaphors doesn't mean Drax can't be savage. Remember when he violated Star-Lord by saying he'll find a girl who's just as pathetic as him? You just need to find a woman who is pathetic. Like you. Yeah, Dave Bautista was definitely made for acting. Thank God he isn't wrestling weird anime fans anymore. Nico, 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 Nico. He loved me. No, he despised you. You were an embarrassment to him. Oh. Look at little Goblin Jr. No cry. You can't afford to mess with Bully Maguire, even if you're the heir to a vast fortune left behind by the Green Goblin. James Franco had a lot of embarrassing moments in his career, but his most viewed humiliation has got to be the battle between Harry Osborn and Peter Parker. Well, Bully Maguire, I guess. I mean, they are two totally different people. You want forgiveness? Get religion. It's kind of surprising that a movie which was criticised at the time of its release is now more memorable than the films that came after it. If you want the shots, I'll take the staff job. Double the money. 
That's the power of a viral meme, isn't it? Anyway, looking at the scene, there's a lot of moments here where Spider-Man totally destroys Goblin Jr. Not just with his punches, but also with his words. Stings, doesn't it? I protected you in high school, now I'm gonna kick your little ass. <sighs> Whether it's him acting fake scared in front of Harry or even calling him a failure to his dad's legacy, I'm sure there were lots of tears being hidden here. I mean, Peter even taunts his opponent by asking him if he's gonna cry. Bro really woke up and chose military level violence now, didn't he? You gonna kill me like you killed my father? No, I am your father. <gasps> I promise this gets worse for you, big boy! Let us go talk to the professor. McAvoy or Stewart? These timelines are so confusing. The idea of endless universes is pretty exciting, especially if you consider what the MCU established through Avengers Endgame, Loki, Multiverse of Madness, and now with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. It's all well and good, but there's one dude who doesn't quite get it, and that's the foul-mouthed assassin, Deadpool. It's kind of ironic though, considering he's always trying to break the fourth wall. No, 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 no. I am not X-Men material at all. First off, I'm not even a virgin. Case in point, Deadpool 2. Remember when Colossus asks Wade Wilson to go and see Professor X? The man gets so confused because he doesn't know whether he'll be meeting Patrick Stewart or James McAvoy. Let us go talk to the professor. McAvoy or Stewart? That's a fair assumption though, I guess, because things started to get a little bit blurry after X-Men Days of Future Past. Honestly speaking, I love watching Deadpool mess around with a toughie like Colossus. We need a spin-off series ASAP. Now, I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. Dad? He's too strong. Without my hammer, I can't. Are you Thor, the god of hammers? Hmm? Kids say, eh? oh, they're such a handful at times, aren't they? Even after their 1,500th birthday. I can only imagine what dads like Odin have to deal with. Well, that kind of patient also has a breaking point and we see it in Thor Ragnarok when Chris Hemsworth goes crying to his daddy because his big sister Hela was bullying him. That's when Odin has to remind him that he's the god of thunder, not the god of hammers. Are you Thor, the god of hammers? I know it's meant to be a funny line, but you can hear a tinge of frustration in Anthony Hopkins' voice during his line delivery. I mean, I can understand. Dude still has to use his parenting skills even after his death. Comedy was definitely the highlight of this film, and it showed as Thor's box office numbers finally got boosted to profitability. Can't really say the same for Love and Thunder, though. Someone clearly let their earlier success get to them. It's too late. She's already taken Asgard. Asgard is not a place. Never was. This could be Asgard. Asgard is where our people stand. When it is done, and Gotham is ashes, then you have my permission to die. Ah! Where's the trigger? Tell me where the trigger is. Then you have my permission to die. If the concept of leaving someone high and dry was ever made into a movie, it would definitely be Bane's character arc in The Dark Knight Rises. Bro went from rivaling Heath Ledger's Joker to being reduced to a simping clown. I'm sure The Weeknd can relate. Alright, I might have been a bit too rough there, but to set the record straight, I did like the movie because it had a lot of amazing moments, especially in the first half. However, one of the best flexes was when Bruce Wayne got to turn the tables on Bane after getting beaten down during the first matchup. <sighs> Shadows betray you because they belong to me. Tom Hardy must have really thought he owned Batman when he told him to ask for his permission to die. Well, that didn't last long because he got dealt an Uno reverse and fell victim to the turntables. The real winner here was Karma. Where's the trigger? Where is it? Karma, I guess. But shouldn't the people know the hero who saved them? A hero can be anyone, even a man doing something as simple. And reassuring is putting a coat around a young boy's shoulders to let him know the world hadn't ended. You're missing the point. There's no throne. There is no version of this where you come out on top. Maybe your army comes, and maybe it's too much for us, but it's all on you. Because if we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. Remember when I said Tony Stark was all about the sass in this movie? Well, I wasn't joking. While Iron Man might be iconic for his witty one-liners and funny catchphrases, there's an element of seriousness in his words when he means business. Take that off. What are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. You can immediately understand he's sorting stuff out in his head, and that's what makes him a standout character. Take this scene here with Loki. A lot of us remember it for different reasons. Of course, there's the We have a Hulk line, 
But what hits you in the feels is when Iron Man tells Loki that he's got no way out of the mess he's created. I'm sure you remember his epic line too. If we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. It's different, doesn't it? See, now that's what separates the men from the clowns. Sorry, Bane, I didn't mean to roast you in that last entry. <laughs> What just happened? Please tell me nobody kissed me. Not impressed. When the theatrical version of Justice League came out in 2017, it was safe to assume what the fans were thinking. Not impressed. Superman felt the same way and he made sure Steppenwolf heard him out in Zack Snyder's more appropriate rendition of the film, released to HBO Max in 2021. I'm a very positive person, so I don't want to criticise the theatrical cut, but what I can do is praise the Snyder Cut for giving us a more detailed breakdown of the film's events. Yep, sure, it's four hours long, but at least it's worth our time. The Man of Steel needs no introduction on his powers or abilities, but it doesn't hurt to keep the crowd entertained, right? <laughs> His sudden appearance in front of Steppenwolf was a lot more effective and impactful as compared to his entrance in the 2017 version. And hey, the flexing on display over here is the most savage I've ever seen from Kal-El. If only the guys at Warner Brothers realised how important Henry Cavill is as Clark Kent. There's no time! I understand. Stay down! If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. Did you forget who I am? I am Optimus Prime. Remember Optimus Prime? Yeah, how can you not? He's the dude who made our childhood that much more enjoyable with his robot moves and hyper masculine voice. Leave planet Earth alone. Because I'm coming for you. Now, the live action Transformers films are kind of hit and miss, but that doesn't mean that they weren't entertaining. You'd normally imagine someone like a Megatron to be the sassy one in this franchise, but Optimus Prime had a lot of one liners up his metallic sleeves as well. For example, look at this moment from The Last Night where he fights the rogue Decepticon bots with his new sword. Bro feels insulted when his enemies don't even recognize his brilliance, so he takes them down with a single slash while also commenting on how unforgettable he is as a character. Did you forget who I am? I mean, Come on guys, this man is the reason why we still watch these movies. Let those who exist long after us know that this was our finest hour. Love that guy. Goosebumps every time. What you say, big boy? I'm not locked in here with you. That's it! <laughs> You're locked in here with me! Just because you've locked someone up behind bars, it doesn't mean they're not a threat anymore. Rorschach turned out to be a fan favourite from a movie that might not have done well during its initial run, but has gone on to become a cult hit. Yeah, there are a lot more similarities between Watchmen and Justice League than you can imagine. For starters, they're both directed by Zack Snyder. Alright, wait, I gotta go back to this scene. After he literally fries his prison mate, Rorschach establishes himself as a high-level threat even amongst some of the most dangerous criminals in the world. However, a badass never misses the chance to flex, so bro lets everyone know who's actually trapped and who's actually the danger. Yep, this is a total Walter White moment. Never disposed of sewage with a toilet before. Obvious, really. Not bad for a fourth installment, eh? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want volume 5. Of course, like, share and subscribe and check out some exclusive links in the description below. Alright then, I'll see you next time on the TV Regions.